Welcome to Philip Capital Weekly Market Watch. My name is Victor Y from Unit Trust Research. Much has been said about China and the global slowdown affecting China's exports and the inconsistencies and frauds of Chinese companies. From the viewpoints of those who aren't so positive on China, we will see that much of the bare arguments look overstated. I will consider three main viewpoints in this week's market commentary. First, no hard landing for China. True enough, Europe is in recession, US consumption is still sluggish. Japan's rapid devaluation of yen makes it a lot harder for Chinese exports to be shipped out. How we at Philip Unitra see is that the negative investors have not priced in the central government's tolerance for slower growth. The slower pace of development will allow the policies to work at a much more effective rate. For example, Chinese companies may be less likely to innovate if its cheap produce continues to receive strong demand. Hence, policies aimed at increasing domestic consumption via wage growth may not be effective as Chinese workers are still at the lower end of the value chain. Second, no property crash. Despite continued increase in property prices across major cities, the rate of increase has stabilized of late. Rounds of property cooling measures aimed at lowering the rate of increase have been priced in. We think the central government is trying to control the rate of increase such that the increase in wage rate can catch up. Companies which are in the construction and sales of properties in cities away from the coast may benefit from the central government's directives. Furthermore, loan to value ratio of 60 to 65 percent should provide cushion to banking system should default happen. Third, shadow banking is not new. For many investors, shadow banking is a new concept which rings fear. In fact, shadow banking has been around in China for decades. The surge in non-performing loans may be alarming, but it is still at about 1% of a bank's balance sheet, when growth remains healthy at 15%. Moreover, there have been no new cases reported on shadow banking defaults. Our take is that such shadow banking allows SMEs to gain better access to credit. The surge in shadow banking loans may, if you allow me to stretch a little bit further, may in fact be a positive for Chinese equities, not just the banks having removed the dangerous loans off their balance sheets. There are signs of stability in the Chinese equity market. Since March, major Chinese indexes have been trading in range. Despite the announcement of a slower than expected rate of growth for China and factory activity seem to have eased a little bit. The main risks are that for corporate governance are not strong in China, therefore transparency is an issue. However, in this context, for exposure to China, it is for certain that a bottom-up investment strategy will work. Investors need managers who do company visits, question the board in their AGMs, reconcile the press statements and financial numbers. We are constructive on China because of the three reasons mentioned and also the central government's tolerance for slower growth. One thing is for certain is that China intends to restructure its growth engine towards a consumption-based economy, just like its developed counterparts. It may take time, but right now, valuations are cheap, economic fundamentals are intact, policies are supportive. We are bullish on China, but investors have to consider portfolio diversification and personal constraints before investment. Thank you for watching this week's weekly Market Watch. My name is Victor Y and we'll see you next week.